Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Yu Gao, and it's my honor to join you as a new candidate this term. And recently, I'm preparing for my research proposal, uh, which focused on construction management. It's my great of it would be great to share with you about my research. And today, my topic is uh, intelligent life cycle management of construction and demolition waste, and in integrating multi-model large language models and agents. Uh, as we all know, the construction industry is a significant contributor to environmental issues, and uh, which producing a solid waste production, and uh, produce uh, which producing large amount of solid production. And the construction and demolition waste is a major source of solid waste production, and uh, improper disposal can result in severe environmental problems and a waste of resources. And we can see in the uh, in this figure, that the, the number of related articles regarding to, regarding machine learning in construction and demolition waste management is increasing every year. Uh, it points to the need for intelligent management of construction and demolition waste. But uh, realized efficient and uh, current life cycle management is challenging due to the com uh, complex composition of waste the larger volume, the inefficiency, and the poor optimization. Um, so, uh, based on this, uh, so through the literature review, uh, I have found several research gaps. The first one is the perspectives of AI applications, mainly focused on a single phase of construction and demolition waste management. And the collection and the integration of multi source uh, data are lacking across all stages of the life cycle. And the flow and the interaction of information between different stages like systemization. And uh, last one is the real time information transmission and the corresponding response exists the lag. Um, so, uh, my uh, to address these issues, my uh, the objectives of my research are the following. Uh, there are four objectives. The first one is to develop a comprehensive intelligent framework covering the whole life cycle process in construction and demolition waste management. And then to design a new methodology to collect and integrate multi-source data for intelligent management. And followed by develop a systematic information flow and uh, interaction model among stakeholders. And last one is to design and uh, verify an agent system responsible for real time monitoring and data processing to promptly detect and alert potential issues. And this uh, framework, a uh, conceptual framework, uh, it includes uh, many for, uh, four agents. And uh, like the monitoring agent for real time monitoring and identification, the sorting agent for automated sorting and classification, and decision agent for optimization and decision support, and processing agent and for intelligent processing and um, optimization by combining uh, multi model large language models and uh, agent. Uh, my research aims to improve the ac accuracy and efficiency of in the waste management. Uh, well, to be more specific, there are four main parts in this uh, in my research, from the generation to disposal. And the generation uh, phase, and we can predict waste generation, including the quantities of waste, and give recommendations to optimize demolition processes and tools. At the stage of classification, uh, I currently classify waste distinguish between recyclable and non-recyclable waste, and make real-time adjustments and optimizations, uh, ensuring a currency and efficiency in classification. And during the stage of transportation, we uh, can optimize transport routes based on real-time data and transport conditions to reduce transport time and cost, and monitor the transportation process providing real-time feedback and uh, route optimization suggestions to ensure efficient and uh, safe transportation. And in the final stage of disposal, uh, it can give uh, recommend suitable treatment process based on the composition of the waste and the treatment needs to maximize uh, the economic and the environmental benefits and reduce costs. 
and then we'll apply case studies to validate and uh, evaluate our um, proposed mo model. Using multi-model models in construction waste management offer significant advantages, uh, inclu uh, including the ability to handle diverse type data, data such as text, construction logs, uh, waste classification menus, and uh, images like the waste photos, uh, videos like the construction site monitoring uh, videos and the sensor data like the, about the weight and the volume of the waste and uh, which improved the uh, currency in waste classification and the recognition and uh, enhanced the decision support and the automation. Uh, well, re regarding the research process and the first one is to collect data and so, uh, we can through, collect data through the literature review, the site survey and the interview, and the government websites or industrial websites and the monitor sensors to um, to build the construction and demolition waste uh, database. And then based on this, we apply authority development, graph construction, graph analysis to identify and uh, optimize the information flow uh, across different stages of the life cycle. And then we can um, build the knowledge graph. Um, based on this, we use uh, feature extraction and data alignment uh, and uh, fusion algorithms to design agents and the enhanced agents decision support capabilities in, in the material management. And lastly, we use case study to uh, examine our agent and the real-time monitoring to facilitate stakeholders' information collaboration. And regarding the implications, there are two significance, I think. Uh, the first one is the theoretical significance. It's, uh, it has the innovation in multimodal data fusion technology, the application of knowledge graphs in uh, in construction waste management and uh, the uh, agent collaboration. And the, another one is the practical significance, uh, which improves uh, construction waste management efficiency and uh, enhance the decision support capability and uh, promoting the environmental protection and the sustainable development. Oh, that's a reference. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. It looks a very complicated uh, framework that you are trying to implement. I manage, uh, uh, how do you think I'm going to manage to complete it within your frame of research? Because you're going through ontologies and after that knowledge graph and after that agent based modeling, and it's, it's very complicated. It's very ambitious. Okay. <laughs> she yeah. just started PhD two months ago, okay. and so she's now working to refine. So it depends on her job. Okay. I think just has to do with the group. Yes. Yeah. And in, in some, yeah, let's see one, two more presentations, right? We have two more presentations, I guess. In here and you, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And after that, we'll bring the lunch and we can this kind have of. lunch and discuss. Oops. So, Bijan is another new student as well. Okay. He started uh, his PhD two months ago as well. Yeah, okay. So, we have a lot of new yeah. students that are going to work yes. with this Because I'm new here as well. <laughs> AI and uh, deep learning and yes. large language models. He also is a new student. Yes. He started today. Today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is uh, Binjie Xu. Uh, I'm a new PhD student. Uh, now I'm discussing my research proposal with my supervisors. Uh, I am exploring the use of multi-modal large language models to uh, monitor mental fatigue of plant and uh, machinery operators. Uh, based on literature, I found 
uh, uh, many research gaps on mental fatigue research. Uh, first aspect is identification. Uh, you know, factors such as age and the driving experience impacting mental fatigue of plant and uh, machinery operators are under researched in construction sector. Uh, These uh, this factors must be researched and uh, revealed to reduce unsafe behaviors, improve productivity, and relieve other safety issues caused by skilled levels, uh, shortage, and aging uh, population. Uh, the audition images or videos of facial features are often taken from the side of the driving position to detect a mental fatigue. A new method is, new, is needed to capture the four facial uh, features. Uh, for example, capture from the front to increase the detection accuracy. The second aspect is measurement. Uh, the existing deficits are mostly about car drivers with few plant and uh, machinery operators. Uh, the use of the Internet of Things or AI-driven approach may be useful to capture and enrich existing deficits for further research. Uh, in addition, previous uh, research categories operate mental fatigue into low and high levels based on facial features. This may lead to accurate identification of operational mental fatigue and a detailed classification may more accurately identify operational mental fatigue. Uh, this, the third aspect is monitoring. There are most studies only uh, collect data within two hours of operation work, uh, thus lacking continuous real-time monitoring of operational mental fatigue. Continuous of uh, monitoring of mental fatigue of plant and uh, machinery operators in real time is needed for safety reasons. Uh, I think uh, five research questions and uh, objectives needed to achieve. Uh, the first question is uh, what factors can impact operational mental fatigue? Uh, the objective is to Identify the key factors uh, that can influence mental fatigue of operators. The second question is about what is the better way to collect data to advance research on mental fatigue of plant and machinery operators. Uh, the, object, uh, the objective is to compare different methods of collecting facial features. The third question is how to process the collected data set to meet our experimental requirements. The objective is to design a new method to process, uh, pre-process uh, collected data. Uh, the next question is, can the level of mental fatigue of operators be classified in more detail? Uh, the objective is to provide a detailed description of different levels of mental fatigue. Uh, then, uh, the next question is about how to achieve real uh, achieve real-time monitoring and uh, identify mental fatigue of plants and uh, machinery operators. Uh, the objective is to develop, develop AI-driven first type to meet the needs of real-time monitoring. Uh, I needed to explain why you to use uh, uh, multimodal large language models. Uh, first, first of all, uh, to comprehensively reflect the level of operational mental fatigue, uh, this study is, to design, is designed to collect data from multiple modalities such as text, images, and the videos, compared with uh, uh, the large, uh, large language, language model, MLLM support uh, multimodal inputs, uh, allow us to, allowing us to input data and, uh, and it could be relevant information in a more flexible way. Uh, secondly, is uh, 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 LLM uh, usually only collect uh, text related uh, text related tasks, while MLM can complete more tasks through so more uh, multi modality such as image description, visual question and answer, and so. Uh, 
considering the stakeholders of this study, maybe safety managers, operators, and other personal engaged in related work. So we hope that the AI driven prototype uh, designed based on MLM can uh, meet the creative needs of these people. Uh, for example, safety managers can monitor and identify the level of operational mental fatigue in real time and focus on those operators with high levels of uh, mental fatigue. Uh, operators can understand the understand the unsafe behaviors or accidents that may occur when experiencing different levels of mental fatigue through the response of the model and the tech correspond solutions accordingly. Uh, I, uh, we plan to use uh, two different tools in this study. Uh, first, uh, first of all, is the, uh, the tool is sensors. Uh, this study ho hopes to uh, understand the level of mental fatigue of operators from some other uh, physical characteristics. So, using some variable, uh, variable sensors to obtain some signs of operational mental fatigue is a good method, such as uh, wearable pupil labs, eye tricks, a non uh, invasive smart cushion, uh, wearable EEG sensor, and so on. And uh, uh, we also want to use cameras, uh, considering that feature features can more intuitively reflect the level of operational mental fatigue. We plan to use cameras to capture the operational facial features. features. Uh, this, this page is about the research methodologies. Uh, based on literature review, we can find some uh, research gaps on uh, operational mental fatigue. On the left, uh, 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 preliminary classifi uh, classification of mental fatigue based on literature review. Next is, is design uh, a method based on uh, literature review to refine the classification of mental fatigue. And, uh, on, the, on the right, it is about uh, data, uh, data acquisition, technology sele selection, and design based on literature review. And choose the uh, te uh, technique to process, uh, pre process data and create some performance templates to create a data set. Developing uh, AI driven first step to monitor mental fatigue in real time based on MLM. And uh, finally, uh, analyzation, analyzing the output re uh, results based on the AI driven pro uh, prototype and uh, classifying the level of uh, unsafe behaviors based on operator mental fatigue. Uh, thanks. That's also a very interesting topic. And I'm wondering how are you going to collect data? Uh, you said the people are going to stay at screens, but uh, yes, they sir. have to work. You have to monitor them in a working yes, environment. Uh, so you're going to place cameras in front of the drivers and uh, machine operators? Uh, yes, uh, I discussed uh, how to collect data with my supervisors. You know, uh, just told me it's uh, maybe difficult to uh, collect some data in Australia because of privacy. Uh, and uh, uh, I think I, uh, I maybe can collect data from China or, or other place to do this party. Okay. And there was a you know, photographer in the early 90s before digital yes. stuff had had a big thing and he um, did a similar analog um, photograph series of people at their um, computers um, yes. and all oh, it's just a series of photos of people going you know like in different states of language <laughs> and <laughs> stress so <laughs> anyway. but, but that's, that's I think that's an important point and some of the research is is based on AI here and data issue I mean this research this research will be important uh, have you considered simulation simulating data? So there's always that option that you can create synthetic data. Oh uh, yes, yes. Uh, we can use VR or AR. This uh, invite some people to collect that stuff data. Yeah. And and the other thing is the 
the size of data. So again, we're talking about AI and we, you need to have large amount of data. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think that is something. Yeah, it's really sorry. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Come for me. And after this is the last presentation, Marie. Yeah. The last presentation, very short presentation. And after that, we will have the ones. Matty Neil. And the discussion. It's in the room, so we don't <laughs> ask. Yes, <sir. laughs> oh, don't worry. Be my guest, ask anything. It should Marie, be not Marie. related to my research, you know, personal questions only. <laughs> Mari also started very recently. He is a PhD student with uh, Next Generation uh, Architectural Manufacturing Training Center. He's one of the students associated to the training center. 